A very early good morning here again here from Toronto Pearson International Airport. Today we'll be taking Air Canada from here to Vancouver in their domestic signature class on the 787-8. Our route today has us traveling direct from Toronto to Vancouver over 2,080 miles over the continental US and Canada. Our journey commences at the first of many many doors at Pearson's Terminal 1. There is a section dedicated to domestic priority check-in and that is Zone 1. Pearson International is Air Canada's premier hub, and fittingly, there is a section off area dedicated to priority passengers. This includes passengers traveling in business class, premium economy, premium rouge, Air Canada altitude status holders, as well as Maple Leaf Club members. The terminal in itself is very airy with dome-like ceilings. The exclusive check-in area adds the sensation of space with, uh, a lot of space. But you won't be staying here long. Don't expect to spend more than 5 minutes checking in, even during peak hours. This area also plays host to Air Canada's concierge service. This is kind of like an elevated customer support experience, elevated in the fact that you can sit down. After checking in, you're led to priority security, and then right after that, the Maple Leaf Lounge. From curbside to lounge, it usually never takes more than 15 minutes. That's actually pretty impressive. What is less impressive is the lounge itself. While Air Canada's international lounges are going through system-wide renovations, your domestic ones have not received as much love lately. But this one came with an espresso machine, so that was okay for me. The breakfast spread was also quite adequate, but there were families around, so I did not film that. What is always a plus are shower suites, and this lounge had three. None of which I used today because I was in kind of a rush. I only arrived at the airport 30 minutes before my flight was due to board. However, I did have time to look across the tarmac at the WestJet 787 sitting at Terminal 3. I have a video review of that product, so be sure to check it out. Oh boy, that's a lot of departures. I really hope there isn't a line up. <sighs> Turns out there were two wide bodies departing from adjacent gates within 10 minutes of each other. On top of that, with everybody already lined up, our plane was just arriving at the apron. By the way, this is not the new livery. This is the old toothpaste livery. Business class passengers are distributed into zone 1 boarding and boarded first. There was only one jet bridge for this fully packed plane, so it was quite a slow process to get everyone into their seats. With 5 rows of 1 to 1 seating totaling 20 seats, it was quite a cozy cabin, and my seat for today was 1A. Introduced in 2012, these seats are not the newest in the skies, but are still amongst some of the best. Each seat has direct all access and comes with a plethora of storage spaces and a lot of personal room. The clean color palette gives it a classy and upscale feel. Service on the ground started with a choice of orange juice, water, or mimosas. I went with the orange juice since I had a meeting in a couple hours. Menus were also handed out, we'll have a look at that later. We begin our pushback, and much to my dismay, I realized all the windows had a considerable amount of condensation on them. The windows did eventually clear up and offered some amazing views over the Rockies later on in the flight, but regardless, here's some taxi and takeoff footage. Alright, seatbelt sign off, let's have a more in-depth look at the seat. On the aisle side, there is an armrest which can be raised or lowered. This is very convenient for mealtime so you can get out of your seat without having to stow your table and it provides more room for when you're sleeping. Beneath that, there is a small open cubby hole in which we will find the Air Canada branded noise cancelling headphones. These were very comfortable to wear over your years, but the noise cancelling qualities were pretty terrible. Next to that, we'll find the amenity kit. Now this is the intercontinental version. The international version is slightly better. We'll have a closer look at this later. And lastly, there is a small bottle of Naya water from Quebec. Nothing special here. As you can see, there is plenty of leg room. And also under here, you'll find a magazine rack, little ottoman, a lot of storage space, and, wait for it, another magazine rack and a little cubby hole and hook. Uh, this is pretty convenient for you to put your glasses or phone on if you're sleeping. 
On top of that, we find this really large cubby hole inside of which lives the entertainment controller, a universal power outlet, a USB Type-A charging port, as well as some headphone jacks, as well as some coffee stains as an added bonus on this flight. Behind this, there's even more table space. I put my pillow and menu here, but you can pretty much spread out whatever you like in this area. And finally, next to you, there is a small reading light. All right, let's have a look at the slide out table. The latch for this thing is quite difficult to find, but it's easy to use after that. It slides right out and you can adjust it to quite a few positions along the rail. It also folds out to give you even more surface area, easily accommodating a laptop and a textbook. It's also very sturdy. For those of you who are wondering, all Air Canada Dreamliners have individual air vents in every class. Just a little hint, most North American carriers like to keep their cabins cooler, and European ones, their cabins a little bit warmer. Sea tour over, we were now flying over the coast of Lake Superior into the United States of America, and that only means one thing. It's mealtime. Okay, to be honest, and this might be a little bit of a cop-out, I had some food in the lounge and didn't feel too hungry when looking at the menu, so I just asked for a fruit bowl, which came in the form of fruit plate, a uh, very well-plated fruit plate, and on top of that, there was orange juice and yogurt and bread, even though I didn't ask for it, and she even gave me this really cute pair of salt and pepper shakers, but what here was I gonna put salt and pepper on? All right, if you would like to know what the food is actually like on Air Canada's signature class, I made a separate video about it linked in the card above. Moving on, let's have a detailed look at the amenity kit provided on this four and a half hour flight. First off, we get some earplugs, an eye mask, some decently cool looking socks, as well as a dental kit. I think Air Canada did a good job here with these kits, they're nothing fancy, but they have all the things you could need to have a comfortable time asleep or awake during your flight. They're available on all domestic and US flights longer than two and a half hours on a wide body signature class plane, and the international versions of these kits come in a nicer leather bag with added hand products from Vertruvi. One of the best features about this pod design is that there is so much space for you to spread out and get some work done, whatever your work may be. This flight happened to fall on an Easter Sunday, and appropriately, the crew gave out Easter bunny chocolates. Uh, I don't know what it tasted like because I lost mine. Yeah. Let's have an in-depth look at the seat's functions. On the control panel, you have two physical buttons to adjust between lay flat and takeoff positions. The touch panel itself also offers all the individual controls regarding the mattress as well as the position of the seat that you could ever want. You can also control the ambience of your area through this little screen, including this light down here, as well as how dark or light you want your windows on the Dreamliner. I did not detail the bed mode of this seat, for that you're going to have to wait for my video on the international version of this flight. Alright, Uppy Club music! I hope you're really excited because it's time to check out the bathroom! Okay, here we go, and here I am looking really stupid, really excited to be here in this business class bathroom, which is not any larger or different than an economy one on this plane, but that's okay because it was really clean and that's all that matters, right? Here is a shaving mirror, or if you are a man or a woman who needs to shave on the go, and here is a sink and some hand soap, really handy for the type of person who washes your hands with soap after you go to the bathroom. 
On this side, we will find exclusive to business and premium economy class bathrooms, Vertruvi Voyage Hand Cream, great for keeping your hands hydrated on an airplane, as well as face mist, that's good for keeping your face hydrated, and also how you get a disease. Speaking of diseases, here we have the toilet, and next to that, wallpapering with maple leaves all the way up to the top, and some club lighting. That is absolutely crucial to keeping a bathroom classy on an airplane. There I am looking stupid again, and let's get out of here. So, Air Canada has been voted as having the best business class in North America, and it's hard not to see why. The seat itself wins favors, but the service and food is also not far behind. The flight attendants are really fun, engaging, and very proactive. They take an approach to be your friend and are always happy to have a chat. Service from gate to gate and door to door is consistent and really well thought out. Its loyalty program is still one of the best in North America and rewards travelers fairly regardless of tier. The only gripe I have with Air Canada is that its business class tickets are still very expensive, especially in their wide body product, mainly because there is no competition here in Canada, or rather should I say, there was no competition until now. <laughs> 